you really must print your work. It's no good just looking at things on a small little screen. You've got to get it printed big, large, small, even book size. This in fact is one of my little side hobbies, printing books from my travels, work projects and so on. I've got a nice shelf full of them there. There's a refurbishment project I was involved with there. There's one of my trips to New York there. There's Andalusia, Agosto 2012 there. This one looks like it's been around a bit is from my 2009 exhibition there I am and there is a Teletubby. Now of course if you're printing for a paying client you really have to be on point but also if you're printing for yourself you know you should want to get it right and to that end you'll probably need to calibrate your monitor especially if you're seeing some wild differences between what you saw with the naked eye, what you thought you'd put together maybe in Photoshop and what you get got on the final print. It can be wildly different and photographers, as we've been in this digital world for quite a long time now and some of you only in the digital world, well, we're well aware of things like this, calibration units, and this is probably the most popular, the most famous one, famous, one the data color spider x pro we'll have a look at it close up we'll run it through the system you can see the difference that even the software will show you initially and then we'll have a very brief chat afterwards it's a tightly packed thing there we're directed to the website to get the software which we will be doing there is a serial code underneath here too, which you don't need to see. So here's the actual unit itself. Clearly I've had it out already, but USB standard there, plastic all round, except for really the screw thread mount. This just clicks open and the goodies are there and that will pop over the screen. Nice and simple unit. There's not a lot really to show you there, but just wanted to give you a little close up, heads up, so you can see what you're working with, especially if you need to mount it in a different way or you're just unsure. First things first, inside the box, as you will have seen, <laughs> you've got this little link to the software. Go to datacolor.com, get Spider X. So let's just click here. Congratulations on your new Spider X. So, warm up your monitor. So I've made sure that this monitor has been on for a good while actually, saying for at least 30 minutes before you start the calibration process. Now it does talk about direct light falling. Obviously in this particular video, I'm not doing it that way as I need these lights on so you can see me and see what we're doing but normally you would just do this in the normal working environment which you should never have direct light on your monitor let's download the software spider x pro mac os software while that's downloading i'm gonna get this cable ready Plug the USB in there. And then we're gonna follow the on-screen instructions from the software. So let's open the software up. As always, make sure you've got enough space. Accept what you need to accept, agree. As this is only going on my MacBook Air, there's not a lot of space, but you don't need too much space anyway. So this is version 5.6. As always, just make sure you're up to date and good to go. You don't need to run this often. If you change working environments, it's a good idea to change, but otherwise you're pretty much good to go. Let's run the software then. 
All right. Now we've got to activate it. It's giving me a code there. Let's automatically check it. Let's not do that. Software activation. And that's where you put your serial code in. So I'm going to do that now. No peeking. So I'm going to activate that via the internet. So fill in my details here. So you can run through the wizard if you want. Warm up, yes. Lighting conditions, yes. Of course, not in this particular instance. Display controls. Have you reset your monitor settings? So in my MacBook Air, I'll go into system preferences, displays. Everything is in default at the moment. Colors, color LC, that's fine. I've calibrated this before, but we've reset. So we're reset there. I've got it at the brightness that I'm comfortable with, which is all the way up. And we've plugged into a USB port. So let's go next. We're dealing with the laptop. It's already identified it. And Calvin presets note, we've got a brightness control. Now, does my monitor have wide LED, standard LED, general, standard? Choose your calibration, full calibration. Place spider here. So now we get the unit, and you want to make sure that this bit is going to sit. in that space. Right, that's in. Now it's going to run a little bit of calibration. You can see we're in a way there. Bear in mind you need a bit of time to do this, so we're going to fast forward some of this. It's finished measuring. We're going to click finish there. Let's just remove the spider X out of the way so I can see what's going on. Let's name this profile. Lockdown <laughs> one. Right. It has created the new profile. So let's go to next and we can already check the differences. So as you'll see here, you are looking at the calibrated switch for the uncalibrated. Big difference. Very big difference. So imagine you're trying to get a print just right and it just doesn't come out as warm, as punchy, as clean as <laughs> you thought it would be. Look at this big differences and you can in fact zoom in on the supplied images and you can see a huge difference. Let's go to this swirly staircase on a chrome. Yeah, real nice big difference. Let's get the color chart up. Calibrated view and uncalibrated view. I'm very Happy with the look of that. Different color gamuts there. We're going to stick as it is. And we are done. This is going for 119 on Amazon at the moment. So it could get you out of a fix. And plus, you're going to be able to use it each time you want to calibrate, each time you change environments that you do your editing in. We'll repeat. You're not going to be calibrating it with any extra lights on like we've got in this video and in pretty much all the videos you'll see where they set it up it's the same so I've done it myself in my usual working environment I tend to not ever work with direct sunlight coming in onto the screen and I try and have a neutral wall behind as well so that everything I'm seeing is spot on so yeah 119 pounds to get the best out of your image 
I think it's something that you might want to take a look at. Let us know if you already have. Let us know your experiences. I want to hear from you, especially about your experiences with printing and how large you've printed your images and just how accurate your print was to what you were expecting. Let's have a little chat about it in the comments below. For now, stay safe, stay subscribed. Actually, if you're not subscribed, subscribe so we can feature even cooler stuff, even more useful stuff. And let us know below if there's anything that you wanna see in particular. Take it easy, see you soon.